And with that, it is time to podcast. Survivor Buffs here, Adam and Gideon. Gideon, tell them what we're doing today. Yes, sir. Today we are casting our own winners at war. Basically, we're pretending me and Adam are the Survivor executives, and we get to choose who gets on winners at war. So uh, we have a tier list, as you're seeing on your screen right here, with all the winners up to Nick. We don't yet know that uh, Tommy and um, <clears throat> Chris. Chris, yeah, sorry, I, I'm terrible with names. And Chris have won, so we're doing from Richard Hatch to Nick, casting winners at war. We have the to call men, to call women, sale men, sale women. We're gonna choose ten men, ten women out of these winners to be a part of our winners at war. And uh, some people are gonna get snubbed. So, yeah, let's let's get to casting. I say. I just, I just want to say, if there's one winner, I would be okay with you forgetting his name for a moment. It would be Chris Underwood. Yeah, I honestly just like don't care about him so at all. <laughs> I know who Rick cool. is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was cool that Chris like you know took the season theme and like won it, like won the season theme and like battled back. But and like he was obviously like perfect in the finale, but. I just, it's just hard to take him as a winner. Yeah, I, you know? yeah, I, I don't view, I mean, he's one of the worst winners, uh, but it's whatever. Yeah. And, and there's way too many Chris's. There's already a better Chris that already won Survivor anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. So, all right, yeah, we can, uh, I guess, go one by one here. Uh, so Hatch, um, yes. Hatch obviously was originally scheduled for Winners at War. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if this is common knowledge, but he was then later not invited to Winners at War because of all the stuff that happens on Island of the Idols with uh, Kelly and Dan. And even though he was never proven, you know, technically guilty or innocent with the thing with Sue Hawk and All Stars, he, you know, I think just the fact that people, um, you know, it was really the only other time when like that sort of situation was brought up. And I think uh survivor just wanted to avoid anything like that at all costs. Um, but in my opinion, I think Richard is one of the ones that should have absolutely for sure. 100% been there locked. So I don't What do you think? Yes, I agree. I think Richard Hatch should have been on Survivor Winners at War. I don't, in my mind, I was like, how can you have Winners at War and not have Richard Hatch? Um, you know, after mm -hmm. Winners at War, after taking a little gander at Richard Hatch's YouTube, I kind of understand why he probably won't be coming back. But yeah. let's just pretend we're at the time that Winners at War happened. I'd probably, yeah. I, I definitely want him on. Uh, it's unfortunate that he wasn't let on. Yeah, mm -hmm. the guy's naked sometimes, but. Hey, that's Richard Hatch, Survivor his history right there. We got to have him. Well, well, and too, I think that his YouTube rants were uh, in retaliation to him being uncasted from Winners at War. So if he had been on, all that stuff have, yeah. would have happened. So yeah, um, I uh, so we'll, we'll we'll throw him on the call. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I can't remember if you if you mentioned because I was setting it up when you when you were talking. So if I'm repeating Gideon's point, guys, sorry, but we're gonna try to pick five people from each era. So from the one season one to ten, five people, eleven to twenty, five people, uh, and so on. So we're gonna try. We're gonna try. We'll try. Yeah. No promise. Uh, Tina was originally invited for Winners at War and was uninvited for undisclosed reasons. I'm thinking it was just because she's old. I don't care. <laughs> I think she should have been on. Tina? Yeah. I mean, did you I... see how she did in Blood vs. Water, dude? She almost won again. Yeah. Hey, man, she's, like... a, she's a Tennessee girl, okay? She's a farm-bred Tennessee girl. She don't lose that strength. Yeah, part of me just feels like with uh, with Blood versus Water, it was like such a great uh, send off, you know, like her kind of getting to play with her daughter and her kind of like she made it to the end and she made it to the end with all like very new school. Um, she did great, yeah. 
people. It, it was almost kind of like, I mean, I guess Jervis was there, but, um, you know, as far as like the people who played like really great, like obviously Jervis didn't really have a chance of winning, but no. the people who had really great games, she like stuck with it and won all those challenges. I don't think she's like a definite no, but, um, and I hate to put her in like the nah, but um, let's, 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 put her in, it was a, let's put her in nah for now. We'll go back. Well, because another thing, too, I'm thinking is we got to pick at least two uh, women from the first 10. The only other ones try. are. Uh, yeah, try. The, well, we have to pick at least two, maybe three. Because um, I don't I'm, I'm looking and, you know, the only one I think for sure is going to be uh, is Sandra. Yeah. Um, as far as the there. women. So. Yeah. So maybe maybe we can put her in in in, in it, the women for now. For now, do it. Okay, put do it for now. Yeah, we maybe we can alternate tribes back and forth to keep it balanced. Um, ah, Ethan, man, it's tough because I I liked Ethan. I like Ethan a lot as a player, but like, what sucks is too like we've seen winners at war, so we know now what they contributed to the season. And besides that one cool moment on Edge of Extinction, uh, where Ethan kind of like fought back and and. and you know, completed that challenge. He really added little to absolutely nothing to the season at all. Um, so it, it sucks because, like, you could say, oh, Brian deserves to be there more, but, like, would be the same way with him. So, um, and I, I just, ah, oh, it's so tough because I love Ethan, but the only I other think, guys. I think Winners at War was a good send off for Ethan. Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing too was like he, um, you know, he obviously, uh, you know, this was his first time playing since, uh, you know, he he fought and beat cancer. So like that's another huge thing too that like I think everyone, especially people who've been following his off season story over the last decade, were like rooting for him so hard. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's so tough because I feel like as we go down the line, we're just going to find a reason for everybody except maybe Natalie to, to, to put into this. Because <laughs> everyone has like a reason to uh, – Look, like I'm just looking I, at this list. <laughs> I, I think we put them on the same layman for now. Okay. If, we'll we don't, now. if we If we kick them off, we kick them off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Personally, Vesepia would be as close to a lock as you would get without being a lock because I think Vesepia is the most underrated winner of all time. Mm -hmm. I think her win in Marquesas was the greatest comeback victory. Like she was, I, I've never seen someone down the totem pole so heavy and then come back and just play phenomenal for the last like couple episodes and, um, and she kind of like was like a forgotten winner for a long time and has had kind of like this recent um, boost of people wanting to see her back um, over the last couple of years. I think she wasn't invited for – I think Survivor just thinks people forget about her. I don't know. What, what do you think? Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big Vesepia fan. I uh, I mean her really. – I, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't like how – <sighs> and and Boston Rob pointed it out how she just basically kissed butt to get back, which is you know it worked, but I think she would get eaten alive on Winners at War. Yeah, I mean I do too, and that's another thing too is like I feel like she won because like uh, advantages and all this stuff didn't happen, so like she only had to rely on like, um, like you said, kind of like kissing butt and like. Yeah. Who should I align with and which when when can I trust people? When like she had to worry about that sort of stuff. I don't know if she would translate well to a new season. And I do think she's an underrated winner by like absolutely, but I feel like she her style of game just would wouldn't cut it no. for winners at war. So I mean, I would, yeah, you mounted a great comeback. And that's great. And really, it's also at fault for the tribe, for the other yeah, alliance, letting that happen as well. Because that that was dumb move, not letting her out. Because once she gets to the final three, everybody, or once she got to the final two at that time, you have no chance. So yeah, um, I, I don't. I'm not the big. I'm not a big Vesepia fan. I wouldn't have had her back. Okay. 
We'll, we'll put her in now reluctantly. I think we should do this. I think we should each have one that we have to put in. We should each have a vote that, that's like a, a Trump vote. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, is not mine, though. And no, I, no. I said she's almost a, a lock for I – think, I think a lot of the fan base would, would, would want to see her back. But um, Brian Heideck, I feel like there's – He wouldn't no come way. back. There's he no chance he comes back because he was invited back to our All Stars and he said you'd have to pay me. <laughs> right. So yeah, there's no chance he comes back, and that and people know about that. So that like leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like like oh, you're just in it for the money now. Okay, get out of here, you used car salesman. Like yeah, you're a great winner, yeah. but like I, we don't want to see you anymore. So I'd put him no, like immediately no. Mm -hmm. Jenna is also. I can't see the screen. Oh, sorry, Jenna. Yeah. Where's it at? There we go. There you go. Jenna has also had some some off off season issues. Um, I think she won Amazon, and I know she left All Stars early because of like the whole her mom having cancer thing, which I think is probably universally agreed upon as like the most uh, justified. Quit. Yeah, the most respectable quit because her mom did die, like yeah. during, while it was filming. I think I think it was literally the day after she came back. Like she get, yeah, I mean back. it was it was it was such a respectable quit that the uh, editors put in afterwards that she came back and her mom died. So like we we're all like, <laughs> oh yeah, she should have came back. Yeah, that's probably the only no. quit that I will say. I get it. I understand. Well, Terry with his son. Well, that's not a quit. Well, he he was he, cool. He, well, no, I mean he they gave him the option to stay. Didn't Jeff come to the beach and say, Jeff came to the beach and said, they say that the doctors are urging you that you really need to come back uh, to be with your family. I, did, I didn't look like he was given the option. I mean, he, he could have said no. Like they, they, they weren't going to forcibly remove. He was going to say yes, no matter what, but he still could. Same situation. I mean, his, he had a family member who, and his son, you know, is, is doing fine just now. Obviously, he was a, But that was so job. bad that Jeff had to come and tell him. Yeah. Jenna wasn't told by Jeff. Right. Like, that was so – that was such an emergency. I don't, I don't see that as a quit at all. Like, yeah, well, Jenna quit, saying. and that was justified. As, that's what I'm saying. I don't see not it. not Terry. Yeah. They didn't make it look like a quit in the edit, if it was, to, for Terry. Well, let's call it a justifiable – removal of self from game how about that well jenna's was a justifiable quit well regardless i think that i think that the point is i don't think jenna was having a strong season in all stars anyway no, so no. i don't feel like if she was doing good in all stars she would do good in this season i don't think people really want to see her back not because she's a bad she's a fine player and she's, she's a great player she but she bad. wasn't even the star of her own season Right, it was so I, I don't I don't mind putting her in the oh, in the know. naw, but Sandra. Uh, okay, fine, put her in there. <laughs> Sandra, you have to, but I'm like, because yeah. I know what happens. But I'm like, oh right. My God. Um, all right. If we have to pick one more to add between Amber, Chris, and Tom, uh. I think uh, Tom is not a good pick because I think he's just – I don't know if you've seen him on some of the recent, like, Survivor chat rooms and reunions, but he's, you know – I mean, he's, he's what, like, mid to late 60s now? I think he kind of used his Survivor winnings to retire, and he obviously had a really poor showing in Heroes and Villains. And he had a poor showing in Heroes versus Villains – while having opportunities to have a good showing like he was getting along with everyone and he was welcomed he was very welcomed into the majority alliance in heroes and villains it's just that he knew if he was going to join the majority alliance he wouldn't be the top dog and i think tom always has to be like that's his game like i don't i don't think he he realized he wasn't going to win unless he was the guy calling shots so he tried to you know team up with Colby and all the other uh, Stephanie and um, sneak his way in with an idol. And it just, it just didn't work. And I just don't think Tom would win, would, 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 would do well in, in 
the challenge aspects, any of the aspects. So I would, I would, if you're making me choose between those three, honestly, I go Chris. I mean, well, would you be cool putting Tom in the in the knob? Yes. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. And I also <laughs> first snub that we disagree with the editors on. I would probably put Amber not there. You would put I what? Know. I probably wouldn't put Amber on. Yeah. Yeah. See, with Amber is like, if you look at Amber as a winner, I don't think she should be in Winners at War, but it's the fact that she was there with uh, Rob is the reason is the is the reason why she came back. Well, I shouldn't say that. Because I think a big part of why Amber came back too was the fact that a lot of people we were we were, uh, me and Gideon were just talking about this before the uh, before we started airing this. But besides maybe Russell and Samoa, I think um, All Stars was a season where the fans wanted the second place winner to win more than the person who ended up winning, and so a lot of people see Amber as an overrated winner. I don't think she's an overrated winner. I think she's an average winner. I think she still played a solid game in, in all stars. Um, I think she kind of invented the meat shield strategy in all stars, but that's a whole different discussion. Do I think that she, uh, not a bad day. Win? Yeah. Yeah. Do I think she should come back? I don't know. Would you put Amber right in the gnaw or would she, would she I, would put her in the, I would put her in the gnaw. If yeah. we're going off of, you know, because she was there for Rob and probably hurt Rob's game, if we're being honest. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know if if I'm on Winners at War, I wouldn't want a loved one there. That's the biggest target of all freaking time. Even yeah. if she is on the edge. And I don't think fans wanted to see the Rob uh, Amber reunion as much no. as I think the production thought we did. Yeah. Um, because it's not like it ended on like a what if. It ended like Robin. Robin Amber's story came to a complete circle and ended in a very nice, wrapped up in a bow tie. Here it is. It wasn't like it ended like uh, I'm trying to think of like a, a what if story. Um, there's, there's a lot of a, a lot of people that we want to see uh, play again, but um, you know, I'm drawing a blank. But I know I know there's 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 plenty of, of people that I would love to see. Um, you know, play again together. But I, I, I think Russell and Rob's story ended. We didn't need to see them play again. Um, I think it would have been really cool to see Amber come as like a, a loved one, like in the loved ones visit. That would have been cool. Yeah, yeah she um, should have still, she could have still made an appearance, but like, dude, yeah. like she, she's not a great winner. Yeah. I wouldn't put her there. So I don't, I don't like her in the, in the, uh, I, I I do like her in in the nod. Um, yeah, Chris Chris. I mean, here's the thing. I think Chris is just. I would like Vesepia to come back just as much as Chris because I think they're, I think they're the two most underrated winners in the history of the show. I think Chris is the a two bit, most underrated seasons in the show. I think Chris is a bit better of a winner than Vesepia. I do think he's a better winner. I will, I will give you that. I think so, he, and that's why if we're going through the eras, if we're finding trying to find one more from the first 10 seasons, I'd put Chris there because one, even if he is like, I'm, I haven't seen any pictures of him now. Even if he is like old and freaking fat, like that wasn't even his game. If you don't remember, dude, like he was the tribe liability. He cost his tribe the losses and he still somehow stayed on. And then he overcame that big six to what was it? Six to one deficit to the women. And, yeah. and one, I mean, Chris is a great winner strategically and socially, so I definitely think he would do that again now. Well, here's, I don't here's know if he the thing, would win, but he would make a difference. Here's the thing that I guess we maybe should have established before coming into this is: Are we also taking in consideration would they return? Because Chris and the Survivor production have a pretty bad relationship. Um, which I hear stem stemmed from, you know, obviously Jeff dated Julie from Vanuatu, who was you know, a favorite to win. Obviously, Chris won it. Um, Chris does, you know, kind of didn't really do any of his exit interviews with CBS, and he's really distanced distanced himself from the survival world. I don't know if he would want to um, come back, but. You can almost see the same thing with uh, Vesepia because I know she's been a little bit, especially recently, a bit, a bit outspoken 
um, against Survivor. So you, there's kind of re- reasons for both not to come back and not to come back. So I don't know. I think I think we can get past you know Jeff's relationship 15 years ago. Put him on. I can. I certainly let's pre- yeah. We're the producers here, man. Like Chris is fine. All right. I mean, I would love. Look, don't get me wrong. Like I, I would love to see Vesepi and Chris both. I, I totally don't mind. I think uh, I think Chris, Chris would go on back, yeah. before Brian would. Oh yeah. So yeah. that's why, like Brian, like the stuff he's done, like off, off camera. That's like he has no chance. So Chris oh, might yeah. have a chance to come back. You never know. Yeah. Um. So if you have, uh, I will. Danny, Danny. Danny's enough for me. You don't like Danny? Well, here's the thing, though. We have to pick at least two women. And there was only three women, and the other one is Natalie White. I, I, I think we can dip into another era for this one, bud. <laughs> so you only want to have one? Well, then we'll be, we'll be way down on women. If we get four men, we're already, men are already outnumbered here. Oh, if we crap. if we keep our number, here's the thing, Danny in Guatemala, super underrated game, super super yeah. underrated game. It was uh, you know it was the first season with idols, and a lot of people were freaking out about the idols, and she kind of found out how to, you know, take take the target off of her, and like didn't really worry about that, and like her strategy with. Um, you know, picking up that the uh, producers would kind of like give you like a wink, wink with the questions they would ask you during confessionals. So yeah. she would give like really dumb answers to, uh, you know, she would give really dumb answers. So she wouldn't let the producers know what everyone was, uh, what she was thinking. So that like, you know, so if she was doing a confessional, she'd be like, hmm, I'm thinking of voting out Stephanie. The producers wouldn't then go to Stephanie and be like, hey, any chance you think Danny's going to vote you out? Because then Stephanie's, hmm, why would they be asking me that? Danny picked that up. I think she, I think she, she kind of painted herself as kind of like the pretty dumb winner, when in actuality, I think she was one of, if not the smartest person yeah. um, well, out there that whole season. And a good challenge competitor, too. Honestly, I'd rather have Amber over Danny. Yeah, I mean, I would probably have Am. Well, oh, that's tough because Amber. I think Danny's a better player, but I think Amber won a tougher season. I would. Ra- I would rather have Amber over Danny, especially knowing that Danny went freaking crazy in Winners at War. Like she went, like she acted nuts. Yeah, <laughs> like <Yeah>. legit, <laughs> she acted nuts, and I don't really think she's gonna be that physical player that she was in the other season either and that's why she was out so quick because she made no connections because she went crazy so honestly if we got to pick another girl i put amber up into a tribe can we agree that parvati's a definite for well of course this era yeah, yeah of course that is no question for me yeah um as far as the guys go i'm let's let's, let's put a, a quick break on, on the girls i mean can we put natalie in the note do we need to talk about this no, we don't need to talk about it. I don't think anybody needs to talk about it. She's a no. <laughs> as far as the guys in the, uh, you know, if we had to pick, like, if 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 we had to start with two, that's tough. I mean, because from what thing. era? From what? From from this from this ten to twenty. So from, yeah. okay, from Danny to JT, we have to pick two dudes. Yeah, because I mean, if we go by what um, who was invited, Earl was invited. He said no because he was having a kid. Okay. Artis said no because he has family responsibilities. JT was not invited because of his, um, I guess, drug alcohol problem. I'm not sure what 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 exactly it was, but um, and then the same thing with uh, Todd. Obviously, um, the his rehab and everything he's gone through afterwards. So. Um, which stinks because if I had to pick two guys, I, it would probably be, um, well, it'd probably be Todd and Yule to be honest. Cause I, I, I don't want to see. Honestly, Jake honestly, again. same. Even, even though I'm a huge Bob Crawley fan, honestly, same though, be, with, uh, with your winners that you would pick that are dudes. I agree with you. Can we so put Yule, Yule and sure. Todd? 
Yeah, I think we can put Todd because I think Todd's Todd seems um, to be doing really well, might I that's add. That's what I'm saying. Like JT's, JT's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, JT's one of my favorite players, and I would absolutely love to see him come back someday and play again. But I think his, uh, I guess we'll say issues for now, um, are more recent, whereas Todd's were kind of like right after. And I, it seems like on social media and everything, he's kind of gotten back into yeah, the survival he's, community. He's, he just started a Twitter account. He seems to be doing really well. Mm-hmm. I've been keeping up with Todd because – I I like Todd a lot, and his he 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 was a really good winner. I mean, Adam yeah. thinks he's a better winner than I do, but I think he's a great winner, so I put Todd on. Yeah, I, he's, I, on yeah. Your, he's on your Mount Rushmore, so <laughs> golly, absolutely. Yeah, no, if you haven't seen our Mount Rushmore video with Peridium, uh, go check it out. I uh, spoiler alert, I did put Todd on my Mount Rushmore. Um, but I had some interesting. It, I had a, it hurts my soul not to put Earl there. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we can, we can put Earl there. Um, I don't think Aris. I think after Blood and Water, Aris's nah, survivor career is done. Aris is done. Bob, Bob I love was you. Old. I love you, he bud. Was a bone. I love. I love him though. Yeah. He tweeted at me once. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> I just said, I just said, just finish Survivor Gabon, and I think Bob Crawley is my favorite player now. And he said, "Thank you." <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and I don't mind if if once we reach the halfway point that the guys outnumber the girls because I think it's going to be the opposite um, during the next one. Because I think a lot of the stronger female winners come during the twenty plus the, the, uh-huh. the, the new school era. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah. So yeah. I so agree. if we if we did, let's see, we we're gonna pick ten from the first era. So we have one, two. We should have we should have ten now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I mean, Earl could still play. That's the thing. Earl could. Still I would. Play. I would love to put Earl because Earl's literally. If he had a survivor overall, like it was it's Madden, Earl. he would be a ninety-nine. Like he played so well on his first season. I want to yeah. see how he would do again. Yeah, and he, he like I said, he would have played. It's just that either he was having a kid, or his kid was, um, or he was having a. It was something family related that was like very time sensitive but he had i think he had originally said yes um rip love you jt but sorry so um okay on to the next well, I we guess. Have, no we have room for one more women so we can move one of these women up one more woman um, i would honestly go with amber just so we can have the amber rob dynamic sure have that drama with sandra put it put her with sandra and let's do it i don't mind that um, I don't mind it either. All right, so between, no. <laughs> so between <laughs> Fabio and Natalie, uh, we should do three women, two men. Okay. I think would would would, would balance it out. That'll um, work. unless we got rid of one of the men up here and 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 and, and put a woman there. But so yeah. Judd, I, I I here's the thing. I don't mind Judd coming back. I actually want to see him play because. I I don't know if he's an underrated winner. I he could be. I don't know if he is because he played such a weird game. But even though I want to see Judd come back or Fabio, his his nickname, yeah. I don't know if I'd want to see him come back for this season. As I'm looking to Natalie, I'm seeing holy crap, we're gonna yeah, no. He he doesn't stand out with the other guys. Yeah. We might be yeah. making some changes to the men now that I'm looking. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is tough. Um, okay, you have to put Robin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if we do pick, here's the thing: if we do pick three uh, women, I guess there are between Sophie, Kim, Denise, and Natalie. If we had to only pick three of those, personally, okay, so Kim and Natalie for sure. Can we can we do that? Yes. Yeah, I think and, I think yeah. Kim's. Kim's even, though Kim's, even though Kim's showing in Winners at War was kind of off, I don't like how she stepped off for the peanut butter. That kind of put me off. But, yeah, surprising um, for Kim. Surprise! Yeah, I know. I'm like, surely you're stronger mentally than that. That you're gonna bend mm-hmm. for peanut butter. But I mean, we don't know that's gonna happen yet. So, right. Yeah. 
Um, here's the thing. I guess technically we could put both Sophie and Denise in there because there's only two women from the next uh, from the 30s that are winners. Sure. So we so and you know. I'm not saying that those two women are in there by default because I do think Michelle and especially Lucina um, deserve to be in winners at war, uh, hands down, especially Lucina. I think her, her, I think game changers cast was so um, unpleasant and, and oddly picked, especially considering what the name was that a lot of people, and um, it was kind of a, it wasn't a super boring season, but it definitely was, one of the weaker all returnee seasons. So yeah. there's a lot of reasons to look down on Lucina's she win. She did amazing that season. She she, she really played, deserved. She honestly played two of the best seasons within within like five seasons. <laughs> like because she's right. a fire challenge away from being considered one of the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing: if we put one of Denise and Sophie, mm-hmm. I. I feel like that's um, to balance it out between old school and new school women. I feel like we would, we should put one of these two and then bring one of these women into it, which Uh, I don't mind because uh, I wasn't, well, because if we, if, if we put both of them, then in here we have poverty who kind of teeters the line of old school and new school. Um, Cause obviously like her Micronesia was more of old school, but um it was towards the end of old school, and then Heroes and Villains was new school, and she plays kind of like a new school player. Um, Sophie's new school, Denise's new school, uh, Lucina, Natalie, uh, Michelle. I mean, on Sele, every – I mean, I'm lo- but if you just look at it overall, not just the women, you have on DeKal, old school, old school, old school, old school, old school – old school, new school, new school. And then on Sele, you have old school, old school, old school, old school, old school, old school school-ish, new school, new school. So I don't have a problem putting both of them on. If you don't look at gender, then old school is outnumbering new school at the moment. Well, we're also, I think we're going to have to drop at least one of these guys to make for some of these, some of these heavy hitters here. And that'll probably uh, even it out though. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's let's let's, let's go just over. Pretend the old school nudes. We don't know that the old school new thing is going to happen yet. So, eh. yeah, it wasn't divided like that on the show. Yeah. So as of them. now, as of now, there's three spots. I mean, for, for me, the obvious one is is Tony. Has to be, of course. Um, I know that Cochran didn't get invited back he because. For KBS. He works for CBS, but here's the thing: I don't think Cochran cares. I don't think the players care, and I don't. Th- and the audience definitely doesn't care. So, who is it hurting if he comes back as a CBS employee? The only thing I can think of about why that's a thing is because is if the players themselves think that he's going to receive some sort of unfair advantage. Like, because like he's, I speculated that he did in fans versus favorites. Right. <laughs> so, but I think that's one that wouldn't happen mm-hmm. uh, because they want this of all seasons to truly, to, you know, be fair. And two, I don't think that would happen because um, I think well, for, it would be super obvious if that did, if, if it did, I don't know. I don't think there's any way to like, sneak in unfair advantages i think like if they would no. give him an idol it would just be so obvious to the players um yeah as well as the fans um uh, i don't mind him coming put, back you want to put cochran on i mean i think cochran is so important uh to the show as a as a character and like obviously him playing a perfect game but at the same time too like jt played a perfect game um, at the start, but he did it with like a sidekick. And you're gonna, you're either gonna have Cochran or you're gonna have Adam. Yeah, because you need somebody for that role. Adam well, kind of took over that Cochran role. Well, what I was saying for Cochran was that like his perfect game was kind of like his redemption, whereas JT's it was like okay, he played the perfect game. Can he do it again? Can he? You know, let let's see what he can do now with Cochran. It's 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 he played a bad game in South Pacific 
what can he redeem himself? And not only did he redeem himself, he redeemed himself in the highest possible way you can do that. Um, so I, part of me doesn't mind Cochran not coming back because I feel like his, his arc as a survivor player has been uh, so, so nicely completed. Um, what do you, what do you think about Cochran? I'm just trying to think of who we can eliminate to make it a little easier. I, I would eliminate all- Ben. We eliminate yeah. Ben real quick. I didn't like Ben as a winner. I thought Chrissy probably should have won, in my opinion. But hey, and uh, whew, but if you put Cochran on, then I don't want you to put Adam on. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay. Or Nick, really? I think Nick is it was a similar character. <laughs> I like I like Nick more than Wendell. <laughs> really? Oh, see, I, I'm a I'm a big big Wendell fan. Wendell is super hard in, in Ghost Island from day one. Um, because we can add two more guys. I mean, unless we drop someone. I mean, I don't. I don't mind dropping Ethan. I I, I, don't mind. I wasn't. Super- I I don't mind dropping him either. Okay, let's just. I don't. Him. I don't actually. If you if you ask me one person to drop right now, I'd be Chris. Really? Yeah, over Ethan. See, I would. If I'm looking at it from a production standpoint, I would agree with you because I don't think I think it's going to be really hard. I think I just think there's so much bad blood with Chris. Even well, then though let's that, do it. Even though that bad blood is stemmed from stuff that might have gone away, like the roots of it might be fine with the Julia thing, but like all the stuff that's happened since. Um, so I, I I also wouldn't wouldn't mind uh, dropping okay. Chris uh, to make well, put, Co- put Cochran up there. Oh, I still don't think we should put Cochran. You don't want to? I just feel like his 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 time on Survivor has has it came full circle. Like he started off and he wanted to be like this super nerd who like won challenges and like proved everyone wrong and like took over an alliance and played this perfect game and he did that. Like he did what he accomplished. So him coming black back and playing another season, I feel like would only I just don't think he would win again. And I think if he did anything but win, I don't think he's like Tony. Tony could keep playing over and over and over again. I think Cochran, um, I, I just, I don't think Cochran has the desire to come back. Once you play a perfect game, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's a, it's literally impossible to talk. Yeah. Um, but Tyson. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool putting Tyson. I mean, um, entertaining. I, I just, He's entertaining. He's got his. Uh, I would. He. Ooh, he could have done better on Winners at War. That uh, You know. I love Tyson. Tyson's a great guy. Know him personally. But uh, Tyson never realizes how big of a threat he is. Mm-hmm. Ever. That's true. And he's he he's really the definition of a threat. He's a big threat, and he never realizes that. And he didn't do that on Winners at War again. But I mean, he's entertaining. He's great for production, and I don't know. It, I mean, he got screwed by the old school, new school thing, the poker, whatever. Even though he won on a new school season, he's still old schoolish. Yeah, and 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 I want to reiterate this to, to everyone watching. Um, just because we put people in the knock category doesn't mean that we don't want to see them back. It's just that we can only pick. 20 people out of the, I think 36, because we obviously um, couldn't, or 37, because we couldn't pick three people because, um, as Gideon said at the beginning, Tommy and Chris's season hadn't aired, so they couldn't have been on the show. And then Sandra obviously won uh, twice. So we, I would be, none of the people down in the knot, I wouldn't be happy seeing back. Even people like, I would even not mind seeing Natalie White back. You know, if there's any chance that she could prove us all wrong and get some kind of redemption, um, I, I would, would like love to see. I that. would like to see her back and get voted off first. <laughs> ben, uh, you know, I, 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 I was still entertained by Ben. Like some of his idol plays were very smart. Um, in in H versus H versus H, everyone in the Naw category, I would 100% be cool with coming back. It's just we're trying to think of the 20 people that fit best for this particular season. So I just wanted to say that moving forward. I'll tell you this. If I had to pick two between these five guys, if I had to, Mm -hmm. it would probably be – oh, it's 
so tough. Jeremy and who? Well, here, that, here's the thing. I'm thinking it's. I'm thinking it's between these three. I mean, can we put Mike in? Are you cool putting Mike here? Yeah, I am. He had a great okay. showing, and you know, he went balls to the wall the last five challenges, and after he screwed himself over, but I th- mm-hmm. he'd probably get eaten alive and winners at war. I want to see Mike come back and play. I do want to see him come back, but not for winners at war. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the people in the not category, like Mike is probably the one I want to see back the most. Oh, and yeah. Be, if, if they do a Heroes versus Villains 2, I think he's locked for Heroes because he really hasn't done anything and like anti survivor. Nah, nah, he didn't. And, and all he did on his season was piss off the tribe, not the fans. Yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a lovable guy. Great yeah. comeback story. Five well, five challenges in a row at the end. Five the in a row. Five in a row. Tied the record. Yeah, um, I think his season just didn't have that many um, good players, and I think that's why a lot of people don't maybe take the don't take his win. Mama as C seriously. was great. Another person I'd love to see back, by the way. But Mama C was yeah. great, and Rodney yeah. underrated. <laughs> yeah, he is. I didn't say everyone was bad. I just said. Uh, I think I think um, overall, I think Worlds Apart just that didn't final have that players. four. That final four was actually pretty strong for Heroes versus everyone, but but Heroes. Will maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if Will stood a chance, but He's okay. Dead. So I don't I don't mind Thank putting Mike back there, but I'd love to see him back. Um, yeah, I'm cool with putting Nick here. I am I am glad that Nick came back for Winners at War. But, um, Me too. Because he he was a winner from a very great season of the show, and not just a very great season of the show, but a great season of only newbie players, which is tough nowadays. I can't remember the last great season of Survivor that was all newbies. Kageyan probably would probably be Kageyan um, before David and Goliath, which was twenty eight. David and Goliath was what thirty seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because so- Nick is the most recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 37. So it had been almost five, six years since we had seen a good, really good all newbie season. Um, so it sucks putting Nick there. And I and I love Nick as a character. At least I did on David and Goliath. I don't know what uh, role the editors kind of gave him as like the annoying, weird guy <laughs> out of nowhere on uh, Winners at War. Remember that? Oh, uh, the hyena? Yeah. Because he is one. Who, Nick? Yeah. I'm, I'm talking like you know, he uh, they would show him like um, they made it look like he was always popping up in people's conversations. Oh, yeah, th- he did get a bad edit there. But I I mean, yeah. he's definitely not an alpha male controlling everything. I mean, he's definitely a yeah. behind the scenes guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's nothing wrong with being a hyena because hy- hyenas yeah. win, the, win the show. But mm-hmm. is it respectable? Yeah. So, yeah, then it comes down to – to these three guys, and it's so tough because show the screen. I'm, I'm not showing it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm. Uh, personally, I think we're leaning more towards the same two. I think we're both leaning towards. I think we are Jer- as well. Jeremy and, and Adam here. Um, I uh, I I just I love Wendell. I it, Wendell was a rare case of me. Usually, I latch onto one person. Maybe mm-hmm. two people at the beginning, rarely more than two people. It's usually just one or two people that I'm like, okay, I'm rooting for that guy to win. I usually stick with it. It's, it's, I don't think I've ever deterred, uh, deterred, deterred. I don't think I've ever deterred from it. Um, and Wendell was my pick, uh, for Ghost Island. So it was great seeing him win. Uh, so it's, it, it it's because are you saying Jeremy and Adam? Yeah, honestly, I'm not. I'm not the biggest yeah. Wendell fan in the world. So, and uh, especially after I who who's winners at war gameplay did I respect more Adams? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think Wendell. I, I can see that too because Wendell's Wendell's a more. Uh, he's kind of like a, a a chill, introverted guy, and I'm I'm I'm. You know, I, I'm that way myself. So I saw, I saw, I was very, I, I related to Wendell a lot in his gameplay. I feel like if I ever came on the show, 
I feel like Wendell is like exactly the type of he's chill at times. Uh, but to me, the reason that I ended up like not being the biggest fan of Wendell, and I'm very turned off by Survivor players easily. I either love people or I hate them usually. I'm indifferent towards Wendell, but what really kind of rubbed me the wrong way was in his first season was when he finished a challenge and then raised his hands and then didn't say Jeff, and then the other chick won oh, yeah. and he didn't, and and. And then he was like crying about it for a second. And I was like, well, you didn't say Jeff. Everybody says Jeff after they finish. And yeah. then, um, and then also like how he talked to Je- how he talked like while he was doing challenges and like, Oh, see, I love that. People I are just, that. I don't like that. Like I <laughs> like that rubs me so wrong because because as an athlete, dude, like if I like, I can't respect the people who are talking like while they're playing basketball or football and like talking smack, like while they're doing it. Like I, I, I can't stand that. And that's the type of player that Wendell is. Hmm. Just not, just not my style. So I'm okay with yeah. Wendell going there. I mean, was he entertaining? Yeah, and he also had the Michelle Wendell storyline going there, which was awkward, but fine. But I'd rather have Adam there because I, I, I fell off of watching Survivor after Game Changers. I really kind of stopped watching, to be honest. I kind of like that's that was my falling off phase and I kind of got on when winners at war started and, and at the end of Island of the idols, which I found weirdly entertaining watching it. Uh, <laughs> it's a terrible season that a lot of people watch for that. That's kind of how, it, when I hopped back on was Island of the idols, but like I fell off for those Wendell, Nick Adam seasons. I didn't really watch. I, I think I stopped watching like in the middle of Adam season after David got voted off. Mm. And, um, but it, but winners at war kind of made me like Adam a lot more, because like yeah. I really wasn't the big fan. Because obviously Adam's mom was not doing well, and you know he he I understand why he was so emotional with that. But I always mm-hmm. even despite that, I always found him kind of whiny. But him in winners at war, like my respect went through the roof. He played that like so well it, if, even though it got voted out but he still did really well so I'm, I'm i'm glad adam's in the cast he was probably the star of the season pre-merge mm-hmm. like he had probably the most it, it was adam and then it became tony yeah and what's weird is if you, if I that was like <laughs> that was my first time watching adam because i i didn't really pay attention to his his season that he was on because that's when I, as I said, kind of fell off to it. And, uh, yeah, I found him really entertaining. Then I went back, and I was like, oh, you played like this? But, no, I, I really liked his, his winners at war season. He's gotten a lot better as a player. I want to see him again. Oh, me too. Me too. He might be the player from winners at war that I want to see come back the most. Yeah, I think that's what I said when we were talking about that in the, pod, in the mm-hmm. like, two podcasts ago. I was like – I never thought I would find myself saying this, but I the, the one I want to see the most is Adam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm usually not the type of guy to like those players, but I'm usually the type to like the Tony, Robs, Tysons cut type of players, but I really like that. Yeah. yeah, me too. Me too. Um, I like that he didn't um, – I feel like some of the new school players – or not even new school, but just some of the players in general on Winners at War, they got a little bit intimidated by like the mega stars, you know, like your your Robs and your Tonys. And I feel like Adam was not. Uh, I mean, there was the one moment when he like. Told I hate Rob, that he voted out Rob. I hate that. Yeah. But <laughs> I would do it too. <laughs> oh yeah. In, in my I, head, I was, like, in my head, I'm like, you're voting out my my literal favorite player, like ever. And Rob mm. and I was like, but I do the same. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. Um, I was I was talking about the there was a moment where Adam uh, told Rob something like they were voting out because um, I forget who got voted out before Ethan, or maybe it was Ethan. Maybe it was that he told him they were voting out Ethan. I can't remember exactly, but they they told Rob. Um, Basically, Rob was outnumbered, and Adam was in the majority alliance with Jeremy and Michelle. And uh, Adam just decided to go and tell Rob, hey, uh, we're voting out one of your allied members tonight. So, of course, Rob did the smart thing and went and told all of Adam's um, alliance members, hey, Adam yeah, just that told was, you guys are voting. That was a lapse in judgment. but Yeah, I think that was just a moment of him 
not wanting to get on Rob's side, even though after that vote, his alliance was going to outnumber Rob like four to two. Uh, I think he still didn't want uh, um, to get on Rob's bad side, even if they were outnumbering Rob four to one. You just you don't want to get on Rob's bad side until his torch has been snuffed, and even then, <laughs> with with a season where you can return, it, you just you, you never want to do it. So I. I, I get it, but I but besides that moment, Adam seemed to be um, not only not scared of some of the big these huge names, but he almost seemed to get more aggressive than he did in Millennials and Gen X. Um, now, granted, by then he has a win under his belt, which of course would what, what 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 could possibly add more confidence to a person than winning Survivor? But um, so. I get, I get Adam's arc. Uh, would love to see him back. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely don't mind uh, um, throwing him on. Are we, uh, are we gonna each, each, each do a Trump where we could, we can change one thing? I guess if you want to. I feel like that'd be a cool way to, to mix it up. Okay. Um, and they can't, they, they can't be opposite things. So we can't, we can't undo the other person's. Um, do you want to okay. go first? So you can, no, you, you, can go, you, you go. You go if you already have it, because I haven't thought about it yet. I, I, I've been, cause I've been thinking about it the whole time, and um, I know you're not gonna like it. Probably and, not. Because <laughs> um, I guess it, it wouldn't be a, a Trump uh, other than that, and it's really the only one I could think of because um, I feel like a lot of the people in the NAW category, I've either completely agreed with you or was like reluctantly agreed um if i had to do one i guess uh, it, it's it's going to be the sepia <laughs> it's going to be the sepia i'm going to throw throw in there i think it's because i just respected her game on um on marquesas so much and um you know the thing with the sepia is on Marquesas and 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 shout out to, to Phil Wood because this this thought it was originally his idea but I've I've I have agreed with it ever since is when it comes to Marquesas the sepia and Boston Rob were in the exact same situation they came from the exact same tribe they were in the exact same alliance they both had to deal with the tribe swap they both were outnumbered and as soon as that happens, they both it was those two at the bottom. Rob went home, didn't even make the merge. The sepia slowly worked her way up and won the game. So obviously Rob has improved. It took Rob four seasons because I know we didn't even talk about Rob. He was like a lock. He, he's one of those two or three people that we don't even have to talk about. He's just an automatic lock. Uh, to come up here. I think like him, Kim, Parvati, and Tony, or maybe like the four um, locks. Maybe that should be not Rushmore since they're the locks. But um, the thing that's the thing with Rob. It took him uh, four seat. Not only did it take Rob four seasons to win, but for that Redemption Island season, you know, little known fact, they asked all the people that weren't recruits, "Who's your favorite player?" And they only let them on Redemption Island if they said Boston Rob. So it was all a, a tribe full of diehard Boston Rob fans. And for the people who uh, weren't Boston Rob fans, who were like Philip, who had never seen the show, um, during Ponderosa, before they came on the show, they made them all watch two seasons. And guess which two seasons they made them watch? They made them watch Marquesas and All Stars. So they would fall in love with Boston Rob. So it took him four seasons to win. And even in that fourth season, it was a questionable win. Now, regardless, I'm still a massive Boston Rob fan. I think he's a lock. I think he's one of the best players ever. But Vesepia was in the same situation that Rob was in, if not a worse situation than Rob was in. Because Rob had the charisma. Rob was a challenge, was a good a challenge competitor. Rob had friends. He was at the bottom, but there was still some hope with him, and he completely failed in Marquesas. Whereas Vesepia not only did better than Rob in the vote, she made the merge. She somehow 
managed to put help put her alliance to become the majority alliance and then ended up uh winning the game so that's that's my that's my long-winded defense of uh Vesepia. um who i would take out it's got to be it's got to be one of two people it's got to be oh uh, i was gonna say either tina or sophie um but uh I was, I'm also maybe thinking Amber too, but I do like that Amber won all stars and there was that question of, um, did she only win because of raw? Um, which if you watch winners at war, I think, I think the answer is no, but if you watch winners at war, it's hard to not say yes, but, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll pluck Sophie, I guess. I guess I'll pluck Sophie, but it's tough. I don't, I don't know who I want to trump. I can't. I can't I don't you don't have to. Nobody in the NAW is what I want to do. Is who I want to put up. I don't want to put up anybody from the NAW. Other than maybe Cochran. I mean, Cochran's, yeah. So you got Todd, Hatch, Yule, Ethan. I don't think we should take out too many old school guys. But I, I tried to still, with my Trump, keep it like balanced. Because we got like one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yeah, so now it's five and five women. So actually, my my Trump actually made it um, balanced. So I feel like if you did get rid of the weird thing about Rob is that even though he's an old school, pl- like would you consider Rob an old school or new school player? Old school. But he won in a new school season. I mean, but I he'll agree. Be asso- but he'll I be agree. associated. He'll be associated with the old schoolers. Yeah, I agree Percep- with you. Just- Perception is reality. Yeah. So if you look at this tribe, it's four old school men and then two. So that's six. So I feel like if you did put Cochran up, you could pretty much get rid of um, any, any of the, any of the guys up here, but you also don't have to, you don't, you don't, you don't have to trump a player if you don't want to, but (coughs) bless you. Are you leaning towards anyone? Like, have you narrowed it down to like a couple, or is it completely up in the air for you? If you would Bruh, replace someone com- with Cochran, it's completely up in the air because I'm like, I'm like, oh, replace Cochran with I don't know, freaking Ethan. But then I'm like, uh, no, no, uh, I don't know, I don't want to because I'm like, yeah, that throws it off balance. Cochran and Rob on a tribe. Cochran, Rob, Yule, and Adam. Now that would be a tribe. Yeah, sure. Replace Cochran with Ethan. This is a try. Now you got Earl. Oh, I can't take this... out Earl. No, no. I'm saying, and you have Earl. Like, look the at this. Survi- the survivor, the survivor purist in me would be screaming if I took out Earl. Yeah. No. No. I. If I. If I had to pick between those those guys, here's I would... the thing. I'd take it out, Ethan. Under the assumption that you're gonna bring him back later for like a blood versus water thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. for sure. Which which tribe do you think is the is the better tribe? Like has the more survivor talent. I think uh, probably Decal. It's tough. I don't know. Women I- women is Sale. Sale women are strong. Yeah, I think Sele women are, are for sure stronger. But Sele men, I mean, Yol, Earl, Rob, Adam, Cochran. Uh, but then the Decal men, it's that's tough. That's close. Kind of, I don't know. That's the men are close. the men. The men are weaker than the women. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing about the Decal men. It's a lot of like maybe they'll be good because we don't. You know, Hatch and Todd. Hatch hasn't played in like what. Uh, 15 years, 14 yeah. years. Yeah. Todd hasn't played in like 13. Um, and Todd 20. wasn't a beast when he was on there. Todd wasn't a survivor, wasn't a challenge beast. So He wasn't a challenge beast, but he was he yeah. was Mount Rushmore quality. But uh, Sele, <laughs> Sele men, oh, it's tough. I don't know which tribe. I, th- they I, they, I think they, they all <laughs> women are weak. They're, they're I mean, they're weaker, but I mean, you have a two time winner. You have the winner of Survivor All Stars. We're talking about when ne- they're competing in challenges. Oh, oh, I'm just talking about who has the better tribe as far as like overall Survivor players. Oh, I still think that they call women are weak, but anyways. 
I think they're weaker compared to Sele for sure. Well, yeah. Um, but men, I would put almost equal as far as like better players. Uh huh. Stuff. Maybe you give it to the call. I don't know. Because you got to think up until winners at war. You know, Adam, it's tough. It's tough. I think this would make for a better season, though. Personally, I, I, think, I, I think I think we've put together a cast that is better than than the one we got. Not that I don't love the one we got. I think we got a great. I season. love I, I love the season we got. You kicked out Sophie, who beat who beat my you know my one of my favorite player coach. So thanks for doing that. Even well, though she played well, but <laughs> hey, Sepia beat out your other favorite player, Boston Rock. Yeah, so screw you. <laughs> so, yeah, when you um, did when you did that, that pained me. I was, <laughs> um, I'm not, I, was, I, I am not at all of a Sepia fan at all. You need to. We'll, we'll, maybe we should rewatch Marquesas. I've watched it three times. I still don't appreciate the gameplay. Fourth, fourth, fourth times a charm. <laughs> um, but no, I think uh, I hate. I, I hate that season. I do think we we put together a pretty cool uh, list here. Um, you know, there's a lot of people on that gnaw section that I think would make for great players or did make for great players in the actual uh, running. I mean, Ben made it further than a lot of people did. Don't know what happened at the end there with Ben, but that's uh, called giving up. Um, Mike, uh, I, I would love to see Mike. If I had to do two Trumps, I would probably have actually put Mike in instead of – and got rid of Ethan yeah. <laughs> if I if I had to do two. I hate taking um, out Ethan, though, because Winners at War kind of put him back in the Survivor community. But oh, I, oh, Ethan. I, I hate that we took out Ethan because I would love to see – and I would love to see him again if he wasn't in Winners at War because Winners yeah. at War is a good send-off for him. Had a good little moment on, uh, you know, Exile Island and, and and in the challenge, the way he closed. He had a really beautiful ending. He would have another beautiful ending in Survivor as well, though, because that guy's just an inspiration. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So this is how Winners at War should have been cast. Not too different. I mean, it's not like it's a completely different cast. I mean, how many how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so we had fourteen of the twenty. So that's they got they got more than half right. Yeah, but and a message to uh, Ethan, Sophie, Wendell, Nick, and Ben, and Dan. Well, not Danny. You're crazy. You're kind of crazy, but and Danny, uh, we're sorry. Um, we're glad that you were in the season because it was a beautiful season. We're just pretending we're production before the season aired. Uh, but we love you. We'd love to have you come on for an interview, and, and you can disagree with us there. Yeah. But absolutely. you're not here to defend yourself. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, cool. I think that's a good uh, good way to wrap it up. Um, check us out. This Saturday we're going to have a live podcast with – um, Eager Turtle, where we're going to do something similar. We're going to bring back Winners of War um, and go by the winners one by one. Um, but instead of picking whether or not they deserve to be on the season or not, we're going to um, talk about kind of their legacies and what, if any, future they have with the show. If they'll ever come back, if they do, and what capacity would it be in, if they're retired. Um, I feel like most of them are retired, but we got think we got some interesting takes um, this weekend. But anything you want to add, get in before we end this one? Nope. Uh, thank you guys for watching. It was it was it was great talking with you, Adam. I agree with almost everything you did, besides Vesepia. And uh, yeah, this is a good episode. Good 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 meaningful uh, disagreements we had. Absolutely. Uh, be sure to sub. Yeah.